Hello boys and girls, this is your old friend RJ City, and today we will be doing an unboxing, uh, an unwrapping, a de-encasing, shall I say, of my most prized possessions I've ever gotten. Fern Gully trading cards. Huh? Look at those. I was gifted them by a, a dear fan named SM, so thank you to SM for these. I'm a big Fern Gully guy, everyone's talking about Fern Gully, especially when it was called Avatar. So uh, let's open these eight cards. It says, look for coloring cards. This is uh, Fern here, frequently limited number. Says their date, yes, there is 1992 and printed in Canada. How about that? Let's open this one and I guess greatly devalue them. There we go. I want to get you the real, want to make you feel like you're really in Fern Gully, huh? Okay, let's open. Oh, we got ourselves a coloring card of Maggie Loon, who looks like a uh, Angela Lansbury type character there. And then you would color on it. And then uh, you would also, I guess, color the back. Because that's all that's, is this even? Yeah, okay, great. That's, uh... That's that one, Maggie Loon, and color it all the fun, fun colors you can muster. Uh-oh, this guy is running. Let me read this. Let's show this. This one is captioned, Dinner Time. Uh, when you're three inches tall, everyone thinks you've come for dinner as the main course, because I like to eat a lot of foods that are three inches tall. The Goana just dropped in for a little bite. Did you? Zach starts to run and says, don't eat me. See, he's running. It's just, ah, don't eat me. And this giant, colorful toad creature. Ah, who can forget that scene? The old, the don't eat me scene. And look at these uh, evil uh, Hercules-ish characters, huh? They, who can forget the Beetle Boys? Uh, these reckless, thrill-seeking motorcycle maniacs. Yeah, I bet you didn't realize Ferngully had a motorcycle gang. From the wrong side of the forest. The forest, I guess, was divided in, in half. Uh, love to change, to charge through Fern Gully at top speed. However, their noisy bug bites, bug bikes, uh, bug motorcycles, are a nuisance and a bit of a danger to the tiny community. This is a little Pleasantville scenario. Get these bikers out of my town. You know, there's a lot of, of political elements here. Oh, here's another. Oh, look at Krista. Huh? Look at that. Hello, Fern Gully. Krista is a mischievous 15-year-old forest fairy who is driven by burning curiosity. It is sometimes this lighter-than-air teen angel finds herself in trouble and beyond the protection of the rainforest. Don't go out of the forest. This is like stay on the resort. Through her contact with humans, Krista is forced to understand the significance of the magical powers of nature and sh that she will eventually inherit from... What the hell is her name? Oh, Maggie Loon, who is the woman that we colored earlier. This is almost like a Matrix scenario where the Force, you know, it's a Star Wars. These are all the same fucking... They made like a hundred of the same movie and we just keep watching them. Ah, there she is again. That's exciting. Warning on the horizon, Krista can hardly believe her eyes as she gazes. Uh, over the top of the rainforest, she calls home. She had no idea it was this vast. Uh, squinting in the bright sunlight, Krista sees something far off in the distance. An extinct volcano stands on the horizon, a guard protecting the world beyond. We're getting very metaphysical here. A column of black smoke rises from one side of the mountain. It's Mount Warning. I guess that's the name of the mountain. It's capitalized. Mount Warning. Hills of Caution. Uh, oh, and who can forget the cute creatures? The furry little lovable. A new day is the caption of this. As the early morning haze slowly disappears in front gully, the creatures of the forest begin the day by greeting their neighbors in their own special way. This is na 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 that kind of thing. Uh, birds call out to each other in the branches while down below, a young pa pad me paid melon wakes its parent. Everything is as it should be, and it always has been here in the fun. That'd be great 
to create just cute animals and name them stupid names. And they're like, that's good enough. Pad Melon. You're in catering. You see a melon and you're like, Pad Melon. Write it down. Oh, and then this thing happened? Amazing discovery when they found this thing here. Pips. Who could forget the wonderful character of Pips? That resident uh, Pips. Worried that he can't find Krista, asked the Beetle Boys to join the search party. This is what Pip said. This is a whole, whole scene of dialogue on the back of this. Pip said, I'm sure she's fine, but we'll keep looking. And then Stump said, we're looking, we're looking. Then Naughty said, what is it we're looking for? And then Root said, hey, is this what we're looking for? Root points to the strange object bubbling in the nearby stream. Pips and the Beetle Boys fly over to investigate their discovery. It's Zach Stereo. Ha! And think about all the songs you can play on that thing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. These two clear human beings look like they are up to no good, as most human beings in the rainforest are. That's why they had to create replica rainforest in the zoo, because anytime you see a human in a rainforest, if no good reason to be there. At the controls, at the controls of the monstrous, monstrous leveler, which is an aptly named machine, as it crashes through the landscape are Tony and Ralph. I don't know which is which. It's their, um, is this like Ralph, Ralph Young and Tony Sandler? Is this a Sandler and Young reference? Side by side. It's their job to direct the leveler's destructive path and keep tabs on Zack and the other workers. Ralph says, you finished mocking those trees? And then Zack says, don't have a cow. I'm working on it. Don't have a cow. That's a thing that's not a thing anymore. Ralph said the kid doesn't take his job seriously. And then Tony says, and he sure doesn't belong in the woods either. These are those, like, no good Nick characters that have vague Brooklyn accents just because. That was pack one. Let us tear into pack two. Let us, I'm very, I've, the packaging is now shorn. To be honest, look for the coloring cards. Maybe we'll get another of Maggie Loon. But this one, oh, a moment of love. Look at the, is that bleached hair? He must be bleaching his hair. It's this very Abercrombie and Fitch of him. Never forget is the caption here. Krista said, we did it, Zach. Now Hexus can never harm our Fern Gully again. I guess there was a breach of contract. Zach said, but humans could. That's why I have to go back. There's a part of me that really wants to stay. Krista said, there's a part of you that will always stay. And then I guess she rips his hair out. Remember, Zach, remember everything. I will, Krista. Yeah, I'm sure it would be very hard to forget this experience. I think this is one that stays with you. When you're shrunken down to fairy size and you're protecting a magic rainforest with strange creatures and a stereo, you don't soon forget. The next week, it's still very much with you. Ah, oh, here he is again. What is he singing here? The Sound of Music, they put on the back because they're too lazy to think of an original caption. After Pips and the Beetle Boys drag the stereo back to Fern Gully, Zach gives everyone a taste of rock and roll. It's 1992 and put another dime in the jukebox, baby. It takes a while to get into the swing of things, but soon all of Ferngully is alive with music and dance. We've never heard music in Ferngully before. Some of the fairies bring out their own instruments and join in the fun. It's party time. They have a good old-fashioned jamboree. They only have tambourines, I believe. T tambourines and one oboe, which was given to the leader of, of the gully. It's a great, great band, the Ferngully band. It's a good way to get songs into the... Uh, you know, in the, into the movie. They're like, how do we wedge these? We've paid whoever it is uh, millions of dollars to create this music. How do we wedge popular songs? And they're like, well, what if they find a stereo? And they're like, what is this? And it's like, this is music. More Maggie alone. We love her. Uh, Maggie's power. Holding a seed in her hand. How alluring. Maggie, Maggie Loon begins to call on the powers of nature. Oh, wind! Oh, fire! Uh, the seed starts to glow with a growing, pulsing light. Energy from the seed flows through her body and into all the trees and plants around her. Sounds like a very powerful gal. 
Gradually, everything starts to glow as if fed by the same magic heart. And isn't that the essence of life? And isn't that the essence of Maggie Loon? There she is, filling everything with life. And then the more life, more beauty. The seed of your creation. This is how plants grow, kids. Uh, as he leaves the ancient rainforest, Zack is shocked by the bleak picture of destruction he sees before him. He looks down at the tiny seed Krista has given him. He bends over and digs a little hole in the blackened earth. Carefully, he places the precious seed in the ground, then covers it up. Within seconds, a single tiny shoot struggles out of the soil and reaches for the sun. If it's that hard, if it's that easy and quick to grow a plant, why are they worried about destroying this? Isn't this a really good renewable resource? And they should be like, take take this rainforest, make paper and buildings, whatever the fuck you have to build. We'll grow back in five minutes. Oy. Here's a fun scene. Stumped again. They get up to such antics, these guys. After drifting lazily down a stream, Zack's seed pod canoe plunges over the waterfall. Stump, one of the Beetle Boys, in case you've forgotten, is there to snag him. Stump said, hey, Krista, what's this? Krista said, careful, watch him. Careful with him, Stump. He's a human. Silly humans. They're so dumb and curious, unless they're evil and have vague Brooklyn accents. What's next here? Oh, this is terrifying. He's got good taste. More creatures eating. The goanna is rolling Zack around in his mouth, savoring his tasty little morsel. That is gross. When Krista suddenly flies into view, Krista says, no, you can't eat him. He's a human. She spends most of the movie saying this. The goanna said, what? I guess with the guy in his mouth, what? He's human? What would you think he was up? Small pork roast. And are they fattening? Let's worry about his, his calories. That's a play on modern day society. And then Batty says, they're delicious and nutrition. Taste. I really, I can't read. They're delicious and nutritious. Taste just like chicken, which was another 90s joke. Taste just like chicken. But no matter what you ate, that and then uproarious laughter. Let's see what this is. More Maggie Loon. We love our Maggie. The powers of nature. Maggie says everyone can call on the magic powers of the web of life, Krista. You have to find it in yourself. So I guess you just yell for it. Krista says, I want to, Maggie. You know I do. But I was thinking about the smoke. You don't want the smoke. Uh, do you think I, do you think it could be Hexus? Then Maggie says, no, there isn't a force in nature that could release her. And there are no poisons here for her to feed on. Hexus is trapped for all time. Of course, that turned out to be complete bullshit. Maggie Loon was full of shit. The glowing seed woman was a filthy liar. And finally, the last card. This is beautiful. This is a framer. It's called the Forest Floor. Isn't that beautiful? Got to hell, James Cameron, and your, your bullshit glowing blue place. This is the rainforest I want to live in. Drawing on the wonderful image, uh, drawing on the wonderful magic worked by Krista and the other fairies, the forest floor begins the miraculous act of regeneration, which, again, just let them cut it then. What's, what is the big deal here? Uh, mosses creep along the ground and mushrooms spring up everywhere. And that's why these people are so messed up. Well, that was the uh, two card packs of the acclaimed hit seminal film, Fern Gully. Thank you to SM and, and thank you to you uh, for watching. And, and I want to remind you that the real Fern Gully is inside us all.